Peace, shalom. My name is my brother E. I'd like to welcome you back to another daily post of God's ministry. I'm going to start off, as I always do, with a prayer. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, we give thanks, we give praise, we give glory to your kingdom. We thank you for everything you have done for us in our lives. Those places that we don't understand and the things that we are going through and the things that we keep calling out for help, we know that you hear us, Father. Give us the eyes to understand and to see your hand in things that we need to see, to bring comfort to our spirits and souls, to know that you are God that answers prayers and that you hear us. Father, there's so many coming to you at this time, not only for themselves, but for others, their loved ones, their family, their children. So many people are concerned for you, Father. I intercede on their behalf. Father, may this prayer be the prayer that answers their prayer. Let it be unselfish. Let this prayer be something of love and substance that will bring glory to your kingdom. Father, I take your people's prayers and I magnify it to your throne. Hear your children cry out to you. Help them in their problems. Help them and their transition in life and wherever you're trying to take them and whatever you're trying to do to mold your children, help them, Father. I plead their case before you because we deal with a God, a Elohim, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Moses, the God of Israel. We deal with a God who answers prayers and who loves his children. That's the God we know. Father, we know that you're close. We know that your son came to die for us and to reconcile us back to you. And we are for forever grateful, although we don't deserve it, but we love you. And we ask for your strength day to day, so we can continuously to walk in your love, to walk in your peace, to walk in your ways, not ours, but your ways. Help us to recognize, Father, and open our eyes to see your ways that you want us to go in. Father, I know that this prayer is going to be answered. So I give you the thanks and praise your holy name in advance because you are a God who answers prayers and we love you. Please help your children. They're crying for you. They're crying to you. They're unselfish. They're thinking about other people, Father. Search their hearts. Complete them. Complete them in their souls and their spirits. Give them the people that they need that is from you to be helpers, to be spouse, to be mates, to be business partners, to, 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 to be about all kingdom matters because your children are chosen by you, selected by you. Send your angels so your children do not fall short. Do not allow them to bump their feet against a stone, Father. Thank you. And I praise your holy name. In Jesus, Yeshua Mashiach's name. Amen. Okay, so, um, how about placed on my heart today? First, I'm going to go into, um, we have to, in order to have a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Yeshua Mashiach, to ask him, invite him in your day. No matter what you do, if you're taking a drive, if you're going to the park, you, you, you're with your children, you're, you're at your workplace, invite him. Say, Jesus, Yeshua, I invite you in my day. I invite you in my job. I, I invite you in my workout. I invite you with me spending time with my kids. Be there. Make your presence known. I invite you when I travel. I invite you in my in my home. I invite you when I'm, I'm cleaning my home, doing dishes. 
Um, I invite you, invite him in everything that you do. Ask for his presence to be known in everything you do. So you know that he's real. He's been asking, and he's been knocking, and he wants us to be in everything in our lives. Nothing should be held back, nothing. This is why we keep falling. This is why the enemy has foothold. Because when our Lord and Savior has everything in our lives, there's nothing that the enemy can have. Because everything belongs to Jesus, you're sure, that's in our lives. So we cannot continuously walk around and say, all right, God, Jesus, Yeshua, Holy Spirit, I allow you into certain parts of my life. But this is off limits. If that's off limits, then guess what? It's open to. It's open for the enemy, Satan, Lucifer, and everything he represents. It's open for him to have footings in your life. So we must... Be able to be smart and intelligent in our thinking, in our ways. We need God in every aspect of our life. In everything we do, to go into the bathroom, we need God in our life. And literally, and I mean that. Our Lord wants us to embrace in every aspect of his life. Okay, a scripture that the Abba placed in my heart was Zechariah 5. Read along real quick, okay? Then I turned and lift up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is twenty cubits. The breadth thereof is ten cubits. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that go forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stilleth shall be cut off. As on this side, according to it, and every one that swerve should be cut off. As on that side, according to it, I will bring it forth, says the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that swerve forthly by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Okay, so the Father Abba warned me. To tell you. His laws and his rules are to be respected. As we read, Yaba brought a curse upon the whole earth, upon those who still us. And everything that's connected to anything that's connected to a stolen situation or object is cursed. And he will curse the place wherein the object is in. Okay? So a lot of people may not understand that. It's like there's certain things in this world that's cursed by the God Almighty. The Abba, host of all hosts, Almighty God, God of Israel, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Moses, God of Yeshua, him himself cursed things. And we must be wise and intelligence to understand what is it in this world that the Father has cursed. So we will not be a part of it. So we will not endure his curse that's placed on certain things in this world. How would we know what is cursed or not? Because Yeshua HaMashiach is the finish of the law. That same law that he gave Moses that Yeshua came to complete by sacrificing his life on the cross to rectify us back to him. All things are made new. So if you have Yeshua HaMashiach in your life and everything, you will feel the presence of Yeshua and the Holy Ghost speaking to you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't go here. Don't go there. This is cursed. That is cursed. This is the same law that was given to the Israelites. In Deuteronomy, Leviticus, 
Numbers, all through the first testament of the Bible, of the do's and don'ts that our Lord, God Almighty, wanted us to live by because of the sin it produces when we act unholy. Yeshua wants to be in every aspect of your life. Everything, no matter what it is. He wants every part of your life. We're in a time in history where we call the end of days. And things are going to get darker and darker and darker and darker. And people are going to be running crazy and crazy around the world. So much upheaval beyond what we have ever seen in history. But his people, he wants to be protected. His people, he wants to cover from the curse. So while all that craziness is going on in the world, guess what? You're covered by Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You're covered. You're protected. You and whoever's with you is under the finished law of Yeshua HaMashiach. So whatever curse, or whatever's going on in the world, you will not be affected by it. And none, or there's no open part of your life that the enemy has foothold would be able to use that against you or towards you. So Yeshua wants you to understand the importance of him being fully in your life. Not only in your life, throughout your home, your house, your family, your children. Like, this is going down from generations to generations. This is a new beginning. There's so many people who, who the, uh, the Abba has, has given a mantle, family mantles over to the very people who's listening to my voice. And this mantle is serious. Because we're, we're talking about a split off in generations before you that's been cursed, living a cursed life. And we're talking about a time in history where everything's more crazy than any time other than history that the mantle is being passed. So there's a great responsibility on those mantles and the people who is being awarded those mantles to be holy people before the Most High God and their children and the people that's under them to be holy by the Most High God, selected and chosen. I always say this is not a game, y'all. This is not a game. We're talking about heaven on earth. We're talking about the true remnants of the body of Christ. It's spoken about in Revelations. The Father Abba said, ask him. Go to him in your quiet time. And ask him so you can see the importance of who you are and what that represents to you. So it can quicken your spirit to be more strong during these days. Ask the Father Abba and I part of the true remnants, the body of Christ, that's spoken in Revelations. Yeah, it's about to get real for a lot of people. Acts, and you shall receive. You have not because you ask not. Y'all know the words. So acts in your quiet time. Meditate. With the Father, ask Him. Am I part of the true remnants of the body of Christ? Bring revelation to me, Father, so I can take my position serious with you. And 
the mantle that was passed to me, I could conduct it with seriousness in my heart and my spirit and those who's under me. Ask the Father. That's what he wants. He wants you to ask him how serious this is. If you are part of the true remnants of the body of Christ. So when you ask and you get revelations, it's about what you're going to do with that. Are you going to sit around, complain um, about what's going on in the world? It was already predicted what's going on in the world. You're going to be sad and depressed and close yourself off and not do your part and what you came to do as part of the remnant of the body of Christ. You're going to sit around and be lazy and say, you know, if God wants me to do you know what the Father wants you to do. You're talking to somebody. You know what the Abba wants you to do. This is not fake. This is not something on TV. This is not, if you think it is, because sometimes we can get overwhelmed by the realness of the Heavenly Father, the supernatural realm. But look at this virus that's going on worldwide. Pandemic worldwide. Look what's going on. This is something that you would see on TV. Unreal until it got real. It jumped off the TV screen into this world. So when you look at your Bible and when you look at Revelations, it's jumping out of the Bible into the real world. So which one are you going to play with? Are you going to be serious with yourself? Because what you've seen on TV is out in the real world happening every day. What's in this Bible is happening every day. I always say, we didn't come to play games. And I always say too, devil who? Demon what? The Abba wants you to walk in your power. The Abba wants you to know your power. But the only way for you to understand that is to invite him, Yeshua HaMashiach, the king of all kings, into every aspect of your life. Everything. I don't care if you're sitting on the toilet. Invite him in. Have a conversation with him. With everything. And I'm serious about that. Invite him every day. Invite him into your dreams. Invite him every day. Every way you do everything you're doing. I mean, there's some people who can, you know, nowadays could chew gum and walk at the same time. Back in my days, people could chew gum and walk at the same time. They'd be tripping all over the place. So the mind is um, multitasking, you know, when it comes to doing things now because of technology and stuff like that. So you can do whatever you want to do, but back in your mind, you could be talking to Yeshua, Jesus Christ. You can hold a conversation with somebody and still talk with Jesus for sure. You can multitask. There's no excuse. And if you can't, ask Yeshua to teach you how to do that. So when you're carrying a conversation or you're conducting your business, you can still have Yeshua on your mind, have a conversation. Yeshua can actually help you out with what you're going through. If you invite him in. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, I'm apologizing, and I need to apologize, because I need to be more strong like this, and I haven't. I need to apologize to you guys, because I need to go more harder like this. So I apologize for not doing that. That's the only apology you're getting out of me. That I'm not going harder for the Abba when I talk like this. I love you guys, truly, with your short heart.
and I know you can feel it. Because when two or more is gathered in my name, whose name? Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach. I am there in the midst. I come into agreement with this. Everybody who I meet, I come together in Jesus' name, Yeshua's name. Because I want Yeshua to be in the midst. Even if they don't know Jesus, I have Jesus. I want Jesus, Yeshua, to be in the midst with everything in my life. Inside of me and outside of me. All right, so I'm sorry again for not going hard. It's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up spiritually. Wake up to the words that was breathed on these pages that form the different books of the Holy Bible. Let's wake up to Yeshua. Hamashiach, who is our Lord and Savior. Let's wake up to him every day, give him praise and thanks for him going to that cross willfully. Willfully. He went willfully for you, for this day, for this day, this time we're in. Willfully, willfully, willfully. He could have done anything he wanted to do, but that was his mission. So he didn't do that for nothing. He didn't go to that cross for nothing. For us to be sitting around chewing gum. For us to be thinking about how people are going to take us because we're Jesus babies. Because we love Jesus so much. We love God. Don't let that enemy fool you. Because that's the enemy's job is to get you in that way. How are people going to take you? I'm talking to somebody. How are people going to take me now? I used to do this. I used to do that. Or, are they going to think that I'm, you know, Abba told me one day, because I used to struggle with that too, years ago, and he told me, he goes, well, you know that I'm real, I said, yes, Abba, he says, when you have problems, I fix them, I said, yes, Abba. So, what do you want to do here? Do you want to worry about what other people feel? Because the same people, they're going to come to you for help. And through you, I'm going to be able to help them like I helped you. I created everything to existence. Let them argue with my creation, how everything's so organized. Let them argue about that. And I was like, okay, Abba. It took a little while, but I got stronger with it. So when I start to, uh, uh, when I used to let the enemy creep in about how they're going to take me to Jesus and Yeshua, uh, uh, praising God and all day and every day. I used to be this guy, that guy, and you know, how they're going to take me now? Let those people worry about that. Let it be something that's on their minds, not yours. Let it be something that the Abba is watching you. Be strong in him and boastful in him and his ways and his words. Let Abba love you. <laughs> Let him love you for being committed and not backing down to who he is and being holy and encouraging to who he is, the people, show people who Yeshua is and the Father is. Okay? I'd like to thank you for coming to another Daily Post. My name is my brother E. Peace and shalom for God's ministry.